We did a study here in Edmonton showing that 2,000 international units of vitamin D is quite safe in the nursing home population. Not everybody achieved normal. Only 94% of them got to normal levels and no one was in the toxic range. Anyways, dental disease, I will just quickly cover that. It's been known since the 30s and 40s that, uh, you know, vitamin D from the sun reduces your dental caries. Um, it reduces periodontal disease. A study done using uh, 1,200 international, uh, 800 international units of vitamin D and 1,200 milligrams of calcium reduced your tooth loss by 50%. If you're a dentist, uh, this would probably reduce the number of visits they have by your patients. Or if I'm somebody that doesn't like a dentist, I'd rather use the vitamin D and not see them so often. Um, 250 and 400 international units of vitamin D uh, did not improve dental health for the kids. 800 international units did. That was done in 1939. Then they brought out fluoride. And we forgot about the vitamin D. Dr. Heaney went through this here, the 50 to 60 percent reduction in cardiovascular disease, um, reduction of blood pressure, he showed you that slide. What about heart failure? Does the same thing. Dr. Um, Zitterman from Germany suggests that we use 4,000 international units of vitamin D to prevent poor contractility when you have heart failure. I'm going to skip this slide. We look at type 1 diabetes, an 80% reduction in type 1 diabetes when you use 2,000 international units of vitamin D early in life. Over the next 30 years, you're, you reduce the number of uh, diabetes by 80%. This is an interesting slide. You notice that there's all of a sudden an upslope in the, at the last third of the slide. So they went from 4,000 to 2,000 to 1,000 international units of vitamin D for these kids in Finland. At, and then they went to 400. And guess what? The incidence of diabetes skyrocketed. Interesting. Type 2 diabetes does the same sort of thing. It improves your results. And cancer, we talked about that. Minimum of 90 nanomoles was known in 2001 already. You've got to be well above that. 125 is what you need. And then you get your reduction of cancer significantly. And you saw this slide. I don't want to repeat it. But we've got Canadians here. They didn't listen to the IOM report. Guess what? The Canadian Cancer Society suggests you use 1,000 international units of vitamin D. Certainly a good step in the right direction. So I'm thankful to be Canadian and have support from that society as well. And we talked about MS. Is that enough? Okay, sure. I didn't get, I didn't get into, I know, uh, some of the things that I'd like to get into, but that's okay. I guess I'll open it up to questions. Well, they've done a study using 500,000 international units as a single dose to try and prevent osteoporosis. Uh, just take one dose a year, hey? Why not? Yeah. Doesn't work. Displaces your vitamin D off your vitamin D binding protein, causes a decrease in your available 125 hydroxy D. So can you take 5,000 all at once? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You can take 10,000, you can take 20,000, you can take 50,000. But once you get over 100,000, that's when you start having some problems in some people. You know, for a single dose. I'm not saying every day. Never. Okay? I actually did do a review on the IOM report. I have a response to the IOM report that's written, been published in Europe. Um, the, uh, it was published uh, last month. No. Oh. This month, sorry, um, it's still April. And uh, I also did an analysis of all of the members of the IOM and went uh, deep to search who they work for, what they do. And there are a couple of them that work for companies that are in the, in the throes of putting out a vitamin D analog that will work for cancer. So your question is apt. Yeah, I wonder about that. I don't know whether that had any influence, but I can imagine it would. The toxicity would happen is a lot of your vitamin D will be stored in fat cells, 
and is no longer available to your body and does not come back out once you lose weight. That was a big issue, a big question I had a couple of years ago. Well, what happens if somebody goes on a rapid weight loss and all these fat cells shrink? Does the vitamin D come out and they go way up there? Doesn't happen. So there's also another mechanism, there's a 24 hydroxylase enzyme in your body. Once your levels get too high, turns it down. Okay? To override that, you need to use more than 10,000 international units a day for a long period of time. Okay? We know for sure six months is safe. Okay? We also have some studies that go on for a year to two years now that show it's safe. Yeah, but you need to measure. Once, in like you know, our biggest issue is, you know, it's not how much you take; it's how high your level has gone. If your levels in the normal range, which is less than 200 nanomoles, that's the dose you need. Don't go over that. Only if you have, you know, an infection or something, you can maybe use 10,000 or 20,000 for. A couple of days to get your cathelicidins up. That that makes sense, but don't stay there. Go back down. Excellent question. If you have low vitamin D, you need 1,200 international until 1,200 milligrams of calcium. Okay, and that's what you know. Most of the recommendations have been. If you have adequate vitamin D levels greater than 80, like Dr. Heaney had on that slide, it kind of levels out after 80, right? That's where your calcium absorption. Once you're over 80, you no longer need to take much more than 800 international units a day. That's 800 milligrams per day. And you generally get that in your diet. You don't need any more. Well, thank you very much.